Hello everyone, this is Elia Mustafarai. In today's lesson of the course Reinforced Concrete Fundamentals, we are going to see a doubly reinforced rectangular section in bending at ultimate limit state. When applied moment is greater than the resistive moment of a singly reinforced section, additional resistance is required. So it can be achieved by either increasing the section dimensions, which in most of the cases is not feasible, uh, we could increase material properties, provide a higher strength concrete or a higher strength steel, which also cannot be very sufficient in most of the cases. Or we could provide additional compression reinforcement in the upper part of the section. Basically, if the design moment is bigger than 0.167 times compressive strength of concrete width times effective depth square, the design ultimate moment exceeds the moment of resistance of the concrete and compression reinforcement will be required. In order to have a tension failure, or let's say a better ductile behavior, the distance of the neutral axis, the depth of neutral axis, should be less than 0.45d. In this figure we see the section and then we have the strain and as well as the stress block. In the section we see that we have uh, extra steel which is placed on top of the uh, rectangular section. It will be denoted by A as prime and it is the area of steel in compression. There is also a new variable which will be the D prime which is called the inset of steel. The inset of steel basically is the distance from the top of the section till the center of the uh, compression reinforcement. The other variables will be the same, so we have the effective depth, which is the distance from the top of the section till the middle of the tension reinforcement, also B, which will be the width of the section. Also, we have the distance of the uh, neutral axis, which again will be denoted by X, but in this case X will be limited to 45% of the effective depth, or X will be equal to 0.45D. Then at the bottom we'll have the strain of steel, which again will be uh, varying with the load that will be applied. And on top we will have strain of concrete, which will be 0.0035 as in singly reinforced section. Also we will have the strain of steel in compression, which will be at this level. And again, this one has to be calculated if we need to uh, go for uh, finding this value. Then in the stress block, we are going to see the introduction of a new force, which will be force of steel in compression. And basically is this variable here. We have the FCC, which will be force of concrete in compression, as well as at the bottom we'll have a force of steel in tension. The other variables will be the same. So we have X, which is one of the dimensions of the stress block. And again, S will be 0.8 times X. We also would have 0.567 FCK, which is the other dimension of the stress block. The distance of uh, force of steel in compression to the top of the stress block again will be equal to the D prime. And the distance between force of concrete in compression and force of steel in tension will be uh, denoted by the lever arm, which will be Z balanced. So this is basically the balancing lever arm. All the variables are also written uh, here in this section. So AS prime, D prime, Z bell and uh, FSC, which is force of steel in compression. In order to derive these formulas, we have uh, these values. We know that Z bell uh, from the figure will be equal to the effective depth, which is the overall distance, minus S divided by two. So it will be half of uh, S and uh, the overall effective depth minus this value. And the balancing lever arm will be 0.82 times the effective depth, which is something that we are going to use in the future in order to calculate the uh, moment of resistance of the cross section. And uh, from the equilibrium, we also have that uh, force of steel in tension, which is uh, derived at the bottom of the section, will be equal to the sum of the forces which are uh, developed in the compression zone because as you know everything which is on top of the neutral axis will be subjected to ten uh, to compressive stresses and everything at the bottom will be subjected to tensile stresses 
So we have uh, the force of steel in tension, which will be equal to 0 0.87 times of uh, FYK and AS, will be equal to force of concrete decompression, which is 0 0.567 times FCK times B times S, plus force that is developed in steel in compression zone, 0 0.87 FYK times AS prime. In other words, if we need to calculate the moment resistance of the cross section, will be equal to the force of concrete in compression times balancing lever arm, plus force of steel in compression times the distance which will be from uh, FSC to FST, because we are going to take moment about the tension steel. Mm -hmm. For this reason, the distance from uh, FSC to FST so force of steel in compression to force of steel in tension will be the overall effective depth minus uh, d prime or the inset of steel. If we want to write uh, the components like FSC and FCC, uh, we can basically write 0 0.167, which is the maximum allowable compressive resistance that can be achieved on top of the cross section times FCK BD square plus 0 0.87 FYK AS prime, which is the area of compression reinforcement, times the difference between uh, D and the D prime. Then, if we need to figure out what would be the values of AS prime and AS, we can use these formulas. If we need to calculate the area of compression steel reinforcement, it will be equal to the applied design moment minus 0 0.167 if you remember this is the limiting value of k if it is bigger than that then we go for w reinforced section times b d square fck divided by 0 0.87 fyk times d minus d prime and in order to calculate the area of tension reinforcement we apply this uh, formula we have 0 0.167 times com characteristic uh, compressive strength of concrete times uh, width times effective depth square divided by 0 0.87 characteristic strength of steel times uh, balancing the lever arm plus AS prime it's the area of compression steel that we found from the previous formula and uh, please don't forget that the balancing lever arm will be equal to 0 0.82 times effective depth However, the most used uh, formulas are the ones below. So area of uh, compression reinforcement will be equal to the value of K that we are going to find uh, from the formula minus uh, balancing uh, K value times uh, FCK BD squared divided by 0 0.87 FYK D minus D prime. Don't forget that the balancing uh, K value will be 0 0.167. And then the area of tension reinforcement will be equal to uh, balancing K times FCK BD squared divided by 0 0.87 FYK and balancing uh, lever arm plus area of compression reinforcement which we found from the formula above. Again here we have K bell which will be equal to 0 0.167 and the balancing lever arm which will be 0 0.82 times the effective depth. We also need to make some verifications. Uh, we have three uh, checks that we need to carry out. We have D prime over D, which is the inset of steel divided by the effective depth. It should be less than 0 0.171. Or uh, the inset of steel divided by X, which was the depth of neutral axis, should be less than 0 0.38. These two verifications, so we can do either one, the first one or the second, uh, it means that the compression steel yields, so we can fully use the strength of steel that uh, have, has been uh, shown in the formula. For example, if we have FYK as 500 megapascal, we can fully use this value in the formula. Otherwise, we need to make some corrections. And the value, the check, the other check that is x divided by d, so the depth of neutral x divided by the effective depth, it should be less than 0 0.617. It means that tension steel yields, so we can fully use the strength of steel. As we mentioned earlier, for example, if we have FYK as 500 megapascal, we can fully use this one. In problem number one, 
mainly it is about design of a rectangular section with compression reinforcement. And uh, the problem is that the section shown in the figure below is required to resist an ultimate design moment of 290 kN meter. The characteristic material strengths are FYK 500 Newton per millimeter square and FCK 25 Newton per millimeter square. The inset of steel is 55 millimeters. Determine the areas of bending reinforcement required. So the figure of the problem is this one. We have the width as 260 millimeter. The effective depth is given as 450 and the inset of steel is given as uh, 55 millimeters. So we are required to calculate AS prime and AS. But before we know whether it is a doubly reinforced or a singly reinforced, we need to calculate the value of K, which was basically the design moment divided by width effective depth square times FCK. So if we do this uh, application of the formula, then we are going to find out that the K value will be 0 0.22 which in this case is bigger than 0 0.167, so we say that compression reinforcement is required. Having that said, we need to make also a check whether compression steel yields, so we do the ratio between the inset of steel and the effective depth, 55 divided by 450, and we are going to see that the value, this ratio is 0 0.12, which is less than 0 0.171, so we can say that compression steel yields. Then by applying the formulas for compression steel and for tension steel, AS prime will be equal to this formula. In this formula we have uh, the value of K that we found, it was 0 0.22, so 0 0.22 minus 0 0.167. FCK was given as 25 megapascal, uh, width was given as 260, and the effective depth as 450. Regarding the bottom part, we have FYK as uh, 500 Newton per millimeter square and we have uh, effective depth 450 and inset of steel as 55. So at the end we are going to find that the AS prime will be 406 millimeter square. In order to convert this uh, area into a number of bars, we firstly need to assume a bar diameter. So if we assume a bar diameter of 18 millimeter, then we would need two bars of uh, diameter 18 and the area provided will be 509 mm square. Regarding tension steel, we need to apply the other formula. So it will be K balance times FCK BD squared divided by 0 0.87 FYK and times balancing R plus a, uh, AS prime. Be careful here, we shouldn't apply AS prime provided, but we need to apply the AS prime required. So the value that we got from the formula, we are going to use for the tension steel formula. And if we make all the substitution, keeping in mind that the balancing lever arm will be equal to 0.82 times the effective depth, as well as the K bell will be equal to 0.167, we are going to have that uh, AS will be equal to 1776 mm square. So we need to provide four bars with 25 mm diameter and the area of steel provided will be 1960 mm square. So this is the end of problem one. In problem number two, we are going to see the analysis of a doubly reinforced rectangular section. Determine the ultimate moment of resistance of the cross-section shown in the figure below when FCK and FYK are given as 30 and 460 Newton per millimeter square respectively. So as you can see from the figure, it is given the section dimensions, width is 300 millimeter and the effective depth as 540. It is given the area of uh, uh, compression reinforcement as 628 millimeter square. Area of tension reinforcement is 2410 mm square and the inset of steel is given as 60 mm. So when uh, we are required to know the ultimate moment of resistance of a cross section, we need to always draw the stress block diagram so that we can understand and we can uh, identify the depth of neutral axis. So the first step we need to do is we need to draw the stress block. 
The stress block is the same as we explained previously. So we are going to have two forces that are developed in the upper part. So all this part in uh, on top of the section or above the neutral axis will be subjected to compressive forces. So we have force of steel in compression and force of concrete in compression. And at the bottom we will have force of steel in tension. Uh, the other parameters that we need to keep in mind is the value of S and the value of the upper part, 0.567 times FCK. The distance from the top of the stress block till force of steel in uh, tension will be equal to effective depth. The distance from top of the section till the force of steel in compression will be equal to the inset of steel and the distance from top of the section till uh, the force of concrete in compression will be equal to half of the uh, variable S. Then we need to uh, find the depth of neutral axis, but we are going to start with calculating the value of S. In order to find S, we need to use the formulas from equilibrium. So in order for the section to carry the, a given load, uh, all these forces should be in equilibrium. So force of steel in tension has to be this, uh, equal to force of steel in compression plus force of concrete in compression. 0.87 FYK times AS will be equal to 0.87 FYK AS prime, which is the FSC, plus 0.567 FCK B times S, which is FCC. So in all this uh, equation, the only unknown variable is variable S. For this reason, we need to solve it to calculate this value. Uh, at the end, we are going to see that S will be equal to 140 millimeters. And then from this one, we need to calculate X. Uh, we know that S is equal to 0.8 X. So X will be equal to S divided by 0.8. In other words, if we apply this formula, we are going to see that S is 175 millimeters. After calculating X, we need to check the ratio between X over D. So 175 divided by 540 will be equal to 0 0.32, which is less than 0 0.617. So the tension still yields. We can fully utilize the characteristic strength of steel, which is 460 millimeters. Then we need to check whether compression steel yields or not. So we do the ratio of D prime divided by X, 60 divided by 175. We are going to see that this is 0 0.34, which is smaller than 0 0.38, so compression steel yields. So far, we made all the necessary checks. We calculated all the necessary variables. In order to find moment resistive of the section or the ultimate moment resistance of the cross section, MRD, we need to take moment about tension steel. So if we take moment about tension steel, it will be equal to force of concrete in compression times D minus S divided by two plus force of steel in compression times D minus D prime. If we do all the substitutions, we are going to see that the mo ultimate moment of resistance of the cross section will be 457 kilonewton and this is all for problem number two. In problem number three, we are going to see the design of a rectangular section with compression reinforcement. But in this case, when the compression steel does not yield. The question is, determine the area of steel required for the beam in the figure below using the given data when it is subjected to an ultimate bending moment of 160 kNm. We are given that uh, the overall height of the section is 375 millimeters. The effective depth is given as 200 millimeter. Also, we are given the concrete strength class, which is concrete grade C4050, according to the Eurocode. Character characteristic strength of steel is given as 500 millimeters. The main steel bar diameter is 32. Compression steel bar diameter is 20. Shear link diameter is given as 10 millimeters. Concrete cover to be used is 45. And uh, inset of steel, 65 millimeters. So with all this given data, we need to calculate the area of steel required. The first thing we need to deal with is to calculate the effective depth. How can we do this one? As we said also in lecture one, the effective depth will be equal to the overall height of the section 
minus concrete cover minus shear link minus mean bar diameter divided by two. So we are given all these values. We know age, we know cover, we know shear links and mean bar diameter. So at the end, we are going to calculate uh, that uh, D is 304 millimeters. We need to make the check if the compression steel yields. And we do using uh, this one, D prime divided by X. In this case, we said earlier that X will be, the limiting value of X is 0.45 times T. So we use this formula here to calculate X. And at the end, we are going to find out that uh, this ratio is greater than 0 0.38. What happens is that uh, compression steel does not yield. So we need to calculate the strength of compression steel separately by using the strain diagram. If you remember in the previous uh, lecture, we had uh, this uh, strain diagram and we said that the limiting strain value for concrete was 0 0.0035. We calculated the uh, depth of neutral axis using uh, 0 0.45 times effective depth. And it turns out to be 136.8 millimeters. We also know the distance from top of the section till the, well, till the level of the strain of steel in compression, which is the inset of steel, D prime, which was uh, 65 millimeters. So by knowing all these uh, values, we can easily calculate the strain that steel in compression will be subjected to. So by, by knowing the similarities of triangles, uh, strain of steel in compression will be equal to 0, 0, 0,035, which was the strain in concrete, times the distance between uh, x minus d prime divided by x. If we make all the substitutions, we are going to see that strain of steel in compression will be equal to 0 0.00184. We also know that the elastic modulus of steel is 200 gigapascal. So we know that E is equal to uh, stress divided by strain. In this uh, case, we need to calculate uh, strength of steel in compression. So we multiply elastic modulus with uh, strain and we find out that the force of or the stress in steel in compression will be equal to 368 megapascal. So we are not using uh, 500 megapascal anymore, but we are just using 500. Okay. Then after making sure this one, then we go for uh, calculating the K value. So K will be equal to design moment divided by BD square FCK. And we are going to find out that K is bigger than 0 0.167. It is 0 0.216. It means that the compression reinforcement is required. Uh, please be careful in this part. We could even have started the problem by just calculating firstly the K value. So after calculating the effective depth, we could have followed uh, the K value and then we could have found that the compression steel does not yield. So in any case, I mean, it's up to you whether you're going to do this one as a second step or, or as a fourth step. Then you can calculate the area of steel in compression by just applying the formula. And we are going to see that area of steel in compression is 412 millimeters square. So we can say that provide the two bars of 18 millimeter diameter and the area of steel provided will be 508 millimeters square. To calculate the area of steel in tension by applying this formula, and we are going to see that the AS will be equal to 1,551 millimeters square. Since we assumed at the early beginning from the problem that the area of tension, the diameter of steel reinforcement will be equal to 32 millimeters, then we have to use this bar. So at the end, we will, re we will need two bars of 32 millimeter diameter and the area will be 1610 millimeter square. So to wrap up the, uh, what we did is that uh, firstly, we need to calculate the effective depth if it is not given. Then we need to calculate or to check whether we have a doubly reinforced or a singly reinforced section. And then we need to check whether compression steel yields. If the compression steel doesn't yield, we need to calculate the steel strength by using stress strain uh, diagrams. And then we can solve it as a normal uh, uh, 
problem. However, there is a check that you need to make. So while calculating the area of steel in compression, we didn't use 0.87 FYK, but we used directly the area or the strength of steel that we uh, calculated earlier. So we used directly 368 instead of using 0.87 times FYK. So this was all for problem number three.